Another Wi-Fi battle video. This is another VGC match that I had from the International Challenge in May, and I'm going to try to do a thing this week where, whenever I get up and do my morning routine, I'm going to try to narrate a battle. So expect more battles this week, and that way I can talk a little bit about E3 every single day too. But anyways, though today's match is against a challenger named Aria. I think by this point I had finally bumped up around the late 1600s in the ladder there. I think the highest I got was 1690 during the International Challenge. Uh, and I actually didn't get a chance to battle at all on the third day. So, that is what it is. But Pyroar and Gengar are still my dedicated leads. Here you see that they also work really, really well against Mawile and also against uh, Meowstic. Of course, Mawile's Intimidate doesn't really bother me. I can substitute with Gengar against Sucker Punch. I can burn the Mawile or kill it outright with Pyroar. Uh, Swagger, both of these two Pokemon do not have that high of physical attack stats, so they don't hurt themselves as much as they hit themselves. Uh, if the Mawile does not paralyze me before I put up a substitute, then it cannot paralyze or Swagger me, which is fantastic. You see Play Rough not doing very much at all because Pyroar does resist it, and, uh, but it does break my focus sash, so that's a little annoying. But that's all okay at the end of the day. So now I am able to hit the Mawile with the Shadow Ball. Whenever I see Swagger Pokemon, I tend to target them down immediately. I do not like dealing with those shenanigans. Uh, he actually does get a Swagger off, but only one because I was able to put up a substitute and then handle him. And then the next turn, I'm able to Fire Blast the Burn Mawile, and it just goes straight down. Uh, she doesn't switch it out or anything. So. She may have predicted me to switch out. Uh, Gengar really doesn't like facing Mawile, literally, but behind a substitute, I'm not that afraid of it. Now, since she brought in Greninja, that water move from Greninja is very, very obvious. We're just going to switch right into Assault Best Gudra. And she does go for the Protean Hydro Pump, which is fine by me because resisting that Assault Best, not going to really take any damage from that. That's notable. I do get a chance to go for Sludge Bomb. And I figured that Greninja was sashed, and I actually just don't kill it. So, that was a little bit of a waste right there. I really could have hit the real time. She does break my substitute, which is a little unfortunate. Now, the next turn, Greninja's going to go for Ice Beam on him. Switching into an Ice type. And that's not going to do... That probably did about three times as much as the Hydro Pump, which is completely... That's not notable at all. I do get Poison Hacks on the Rotom Heat form, but with as much damage as the uh, Sludge Bomb did, it's still going to be a 2-hit KO regardless. Now, she does go for Overheat onto Gengar now that my substitute is down, and is able to take down Gengar, but at this point, it's kind of uh, one. And I really do think um, Gengar's Shadow Tag ability in the beginning of the match, she probably would have switched out into Rotom Heat especially against Pyroar, if she had the ability to. That was not a good matchup for either of her Pokemon, but she couldn't switch out because of Gengar's ability after I Mega Evolved. So I really think that that made a big difference. A lot of people kind of sleep on that, uh, and Gengar is often uh, paired with things uh, like uh, Gothitelle for the Parish Trap and all that good stuff. But you know, in this match it didn't end up mattering, and I was able to take it fairly comfortably. So I hope you guys enjoyed this match. And I will talk to you all hopefully tomorrow. Have a great day. Bye-bye now.